There we go. That is what I like. Oh yes. Yeah, there we go. That is that is exactly what we should be doing. We should be going into the enemy's archers and trying to, to disrupt them as much as possible. Hello reformers and welcome back to Pendor. Now when we left off we were on a bit of an errand to uh, deliver some oil here, not for any specific task or anything, but just because we wanted to do a little bit of trading. And I actually did arrive at my destination, which I believe was, was it Yavik's home? I think it was Yavik's home. And I started to sell oil there. And then I decided, hey, okay, we're going to go and check to see whether there's anything I can trade from Yavik's home. And before I sold all of my oil, I uh, did check actually the prices on it. And then it said, taking oil and trading it to Salian, which is exactly where we are right now, is going to give me a greater profit, which is kind of weird. I have no idea why they decided to tell me that, but it's okay, because as you can see, we are going to gain a huge amount of money, which I very much appreciate, and also a little bit of food in the process. And otherwise, I am wanting to find a ransom broker. Maybe I'll be able to find one in here. I doubt it now. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, I was also wanting to find King Ulric too, because obviously I'm going to need to speak to him about the task that we were able to complete for him. And uh, yes, unfortunately, he's nowhere to be seen. However, there is a Count Otto nearby. Yes, unfortunately, he is a little bit too powerful for us at the moment, I think. I mean, we have 86 and we, we are continuing to get more powerful units as we stick around here. But uh, it, it seems like maybe that's not that's not really going to work. I mean, you can see here that it seems like King Ulrich was actually in battle with Count Otto. So let's go and speak to King Ulrich, actually. Oh, never mind. Okay. Go get him. Get him. Get him in. Ah, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna try and get him. There we go. All right, so this is actually pretty cool because we're helping King Ulrich. Well, technically, he's helping us, kind of. Hopefully, it's going to still give us a little bit of a relation increase with him. And uh, we're going to get a chance to eliminate one of the more powerful Ravenstone vassals. And I'm just hoping that we'll be able to do significant damage against his forces. I mean, I don't know. He has some pretty high tier units, so I'm a bit worried about it, to be honest. But maybe we'll be able to pull through here if we have superior tactics, which uh, that's kind of a that's kind of a thing, isn't it? It's kind of a bit of a problem. But anyway, let's see if we can do this. I mean, King Ulrich should have a huge amount of things. Uh, in terms of high tier units obviously to help him out and hopefully he'll be able to charge in and actually do something instead of just letting us take the brunt of the assault so I, I don't actually have oh I do have quite a few archers I have 18 archers so I'm gonna tell them just to stand around here oh yeah there goes the doom guide and I don't really want to take bets on when the doom guide is oh there we go okay we're gonna have to charge straight on in here yeah this is this is not good. This is this is not good. This is certainly not good. Oh wow. Okay. That's a lot of very, very powerful cavalry running around and we are gonna lose a huge amount of units in this fight. We certainly are. If if we are not able to you know eliminate their cavalry quicker than this, I mean King Ulrich has a huge amount of Knights of the Lion, so I'm hopeful that that is going to sway the battle in our favour. But if they are not able to be effective and efficient in what they are choosing to select as targets, then I think we might be having a bloodbath on our hands, which would not be good at all. So I'm going to try and see if I can eliminate this fellow. Maybe, maybe just stop him where he stands. Is that actually Count Otto himself? Yes, I think it was. I think it was, and he was eliminated, so that's all that matters. There we go. All right, now they do have obviously a whole bunch of horse archers and I am a really, really, I'm not a big fan of horse archers. I mean, you know that if you've been watching me for a while, I, I think that horse archers are too good for their own good. <laughs> and uh, yes, hopefully we're not going to 
succumb to their damage. Yeah, uh, take take that horse archer. Uh, he's, he's 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 a little bit wily, isn't he? Wow, really? He was really able to escape from me, even though my horse is a little bit quicker than his. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, come on now. Ah, okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm literally going to switch to my longer reach weapon. <laughs> that is still not making any difference whatsoever. There we go, we finally took him out. Seven damage? Yeah, this is exactly also the reason why I was being a little bit careful there. Because there were a whole bunch of lancers behind me. And this is actually really good. This is really, really good for me. Because it is causing the enemy to split up some of their most elite units. And tell them to basically just charge after someone that's not really doing that much to win the battle. I.e. me, obviously. And uh, yeah, it has actually caused them to have a pretty big deficit in the amount of reinforcements they have on the battlefield at the moment. So I'm pretty happy about how everything is working out at the moment. I'm not very happy about how many... Ow. Yes, I'm not very happy about uh, how many kills I've been able to gain. But I suppose that's just how it goes sometimes. I mean, it really depends on how lucky you get for the most part. I mean... Many of our forces right here are very, very effective at what they're able to do. I mean, Lethal Durin's getting kills, Mercenary Warrior, Salian Cavalry, all kinds of really pretty high tier units, and I'm not really capable of really competing with that at the moment, at the very least. I mean, I don't have a bow either at the moment, and I'd like to be able to do that at some point. And, uh, oh yeah, I believe that someone did mention in the comments that the bow that was given to us by the god in the previous episode, or one of the previous episodes at least, that does not stick around, even if you give it to a companion, which is unfortunate. But maybe we can put it into a chest, and maybe that's going to save it. But I don't really know about that. I don't really want to put it into a chest and then have that chest be refreshed or something, and then lose it like that. But obviously losing it in general is uh, kind of inevitable, I suppose. So I, su I, I, I suppose we'll just have to deal with it when that happens. But maybe we'll just actually use it ourselves to get a couple of extra kills. I'm actually unsure how many kills Adiz has gotten in this fight, but hopefully it's a decent amount. Anyway, as you can see there, 19 units of our own, of our own band have been eliminated. Seven of them have succumbed to their wounds and there's actually one enemy remaining and that was a Ravenstone Rogue Knight. Very nice. And we've eliminated the entirety of the Ravenstone forces but that was uh, that was okay. That was alright. It wasn't too bad but it wasn't great either. I would have preferred that we didn't lose for example a War Priest. Yes, you, losing one of those is pretty costly in my opinion. And what else did we lose? Well, we lost a Cobra Warrior, nothing really to worry about there, to be honest. One Ravenstone Mounted Ranger. Well, you know how I really do not like horse archers? Well, having horse archers on my side, that's a completely different story. Very much appreciate having them help me out. But there you go. Okay, so Adiz actually did gain one kill there, which is not too bad. Would have appreciated him getting a little bit more, like Lethal Durin, because they both technically are horse archers at the moment, but obviously Lethal Durin probably has much better gear. Okay, so there's Frederick. He's going to be taking a piece of chest armor, and we can take the rest of it and sell it, of course. There we go. And we're also going to take this. There we are. Very nice. Okay, so yeah, we did actually get a little bit of relation with King Ulrich right here. Maybe we can speak to him and gain a little bit more. Have you brought me any news about that task I gave you? You know the one I mean. I have the reports you wanted right here. Let me just say that very loud so that uh, everyone can hear about our spying. Ah, well done. It's good to have competent men on my side. Here is the payment I promised you. All right. Well, thanks very much. He now has 17 relation with us. I'm going to ask him whether he has any other tasks because, in my opinion, gaining as much relation as possible with the liege of your faction is fantastic. Of course, do bear in mind that I am currently a mercenary and so... We don't really have a village or anything to worry about and we don't have the opportunity to become a marshal and we don't have 
you know, any other way of gaining thieves from him. So at the moment, 17 relations kind of wasted, but hopefully once we become a vassal, if we decide to become a vassal, then it will come in handy. So it seems like there is a tax issue going on here. So I'm going to go over to Asgard and we'll see if we can collect the taxes for King Ulrich. And who do we need to uh, recruit the... Ah, Lord Andre has asked us to raise five Salian halberdiers. Ah, oh, well, let's see what we can do with that. Now, I'm going to have to head over here to Asgard first. And let's actually just take a look. Do I have any Salian units on me right now? Because if I don't, then that's kind of defeating the whole purpose of getting those units for Lord Andre. So let's see if we can... Get some more war priests there. Empire Armored Crossbowmen. These guys are fantastic. I love the Empire for these units specifically. I can kind of leave the other units and, uh, you know, I don't really mind too much about using them. But if you're going to play with the Empire, Crossbowmen are fantastic. These guys, really amazing. And let's see. Do I have any others? Okay, so I do have two Salian Man at Arms. And they can become Salian Halberdiers, but that is going to take a long time, and I don't think I have any others. So I'm probably, considering I have a little bit of space here, I'm probably going to go to a nearby village, maybe actually Stagheart right here. And I'm just going to recruit a couple of people. And who's this over here? We have a Black Coven. We might want to take them out for their prisoners, but they don't have any Salian prisoners specifically, so it's probably not the best idea. So let's just go on to Asgard, and I'm actually going to... Oh, I can't recruit... Oh, wow. Okay, this village already does not like us. So let us speak with the village elder here real quick. Do you have any tasks? They take our livestock. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Hmm. This might actually be a pretty decent way to spend our time here, because we already have the ability to recruit units thanks to us being able to train them and I do have a much better trainer skill than I used to have so this is only going to take nine hours each round to be able to train these guys and now that we are a higher level we're obviously being pitted against many many more of these peasants so this is probably not going to work out too well for us maybe probably not actually I, I, I just bear in mind that I'm not exactly great fighting when we are kind of naked. So, yeah. We might actually take a little bit more damage than I would like. But this is necessary, because at the very end of this task, we're going to gain such a huge amount of relation that we don't have to worry about, in the future, recruiting from this village and being absolutely fine as a result. So, if we can just eliminate these guys as quickly as possible, then that would be fantastic. And then, of course, we are going to get that bandit attack. They are going to attack us very, very soon. And, uh, actually, how close am I to the next le- Ah, oh, I can't actually- I can't actually wait. Uh, okay. I can't actually wait and check my character sheet at the moment, so I guess I might be able to do it in here. Let's take a look. Hmm, I actually did just level up, didn't I? Apparently I did just level up, so I guess I'm just going to level up my intelligence even further, and we're going to go for more trainer skill. Yeah, we're going to go for a super amount of trainer skill. Actually, one more in trainer, and we'll go for one more in horse archery, because eventually I am going to be using a bow. And I know I keep saying that. I definitely keep saying that. And then it's just like, yes, I'm going to be using a bow, and uh, then, it's, then it's episode 2000. And then it's like, yes, I'm going to be using a bow. And uh, yeah, all that. So hopefully we're going to be able to get a bow at some point. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll just steal the one from uh, from Adiz. And maybe that's going to act as our bow for the remaining time that we actually have it. Because obviously that bow is going to go away soon. I don't know, I don't know how soon really, but sometime. There we go. Nice. We were able to eliminate him, no problem at all. And this should, there we go, prepare us for a fight. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so I don't know exactly what we're going to be fighting here. Hopefully no rogue Blackheart Squires or whatever. Oh my. Yes, I think they actually do have some rogue Blackheart Squires here. So this is probably not going to work out too well for us. Because these guys, oh, they're actually knights. Oh, wow. Okay, they are actually knights. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so hopefully 
they're not going to eliminate too many of our peasants here because we've not really trained them the best we could have. Uh, maybe giving them a couple of weapons and maybe some armor would have been a good idea, but I guess that's not what we were hired to do, so to speak. So I guess we'll just try and protect them as best we can, but I'm hopeful that we won't take too many casualties as a result. Let's just charge into their lines here and make sure that their archers can't do too many... Too many shots. Not too many shots. There we go. That is what I like. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we go. That is that is exactly what we should be doing. We should be going into the enemy's archers and trying to, to disrupt them as much as possible because that is going to result in the enemy becoming disarrayed because they don't have their ranged support and they're going to have to rely on their infantry who are being swarmed as we speak by many, many farmers and indeed peasants as well. Well, are they, aren't they the same thing? Are they the same thing? Farmers, peasants? I don't know. Really depends. But yes, this guy is proving himself to be quite a pain, so we're gonna... <laughs> yes, we're gonna smash at him for seven damage. Good work. Good work, Beartild. You're doing a fantastic job, as you can blatantly see. And there we go. <laughs> wow, can't believe I took literal two arrows to the... to the what? He shot me in the arm? The arm and the leg. Well, that's not very nice of him. But... This is also one of the greater things about doing these tasks, which I really love. You're able to gain super amounts of renown for not doing too much, and I very much appreciate it. So, yeah, we're going to do that, and we're also going to refuse so that we gain a little bit of honor. This is why these training tasks that the village elders give you are amazing. But now I'm going to have to collect your taxes. So I've just saved you from the bandits, and now I'm going to have to steal your money. So anyway, let's <laughs> ignore them and continue. Oh, wow. Okay, they're actually attacking me. This is interesting. Okay, so Adiz, we have Sara, and we have Kasim. And uh, we're going to have to deal with the peasants that we just trained in fighting. Wouldn't that be amusing if they actually reacted to that unique event? That would be pretty amazing, but... Obviously, it's not, it's not that, you know, it's not that in-depth. They're not going to be able to do that. I was a bit worried there for a second. I actually thought they might be able to eliminate me for a bit. And, uh, yeah, that would not have been good. Not have been good. Kasim's doing a fantastic job. Sara, of course, is an absolute beast. And uh, Adiz seems to be alive still. Is he alive? I hope he's alive. Can you get a kill, Adiz? I mean, he has to actually just leveled up, so maybe he doesn't really need to. I actually didn't even need to help them, but I was a bit worried, considering I took a little bit of damage. Okay, let's see who's going to get this kill. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be... Take your bets. Who is it going to be? I don't even know. Oh, Kasim. Okay. I actually thought that was a D's for a second there. I'm getting them mixed up because they have pretty similar looking armor. Okay, so there you go. Nice. We're able to now... Steal all their money. We've beat them down and uh, trodden them underfoot. <laughs> oh dear, yes. That's not necessarily the greatest thing to do ever. But thankfully we don't lose honor for it. Because technically we are doing the, the liege's bidding. So it sh really shouldn't lose us any honor in that case. Okay, so let's just take a look here. Do we have any others to level up? Yes, we do. Ah, nice. Another nine Salian militia. And our trainer skill is going to continue to level those guys up as we run around and do various errands. Now, let's say, oh, yes, of course, King Ulrich is no longer here. I don't know where he's gone, and I don't think mm, there's not going to be anyone here for me to ask either. So maybe I can, ah, here we go. Hello there. I would love to be able to sell my prisoners. I've had these for so long, and I just haven't found a ransom broker. Apparently, according to, I think, one of you in the comments, the slave trader that is available in, what is it now, Singal, I believe? Yeah, Ram Ramun, Ramun, the slave trader, apparently he actually, well, buys your prisoners for the same price as regular ransom brokers. And I, ha I had no idea about that. Apparently that's been changed because Ramun in previous versions has always bought your prisoners for a flat 50 
and that's kind of similar to how tavern keepers do it in other mods as well so usually it's not the best idea to sell prisoners to these NPCs so if that is indeed the case I'm very pleased to hear that because that means that if I'm ever near Singal ever again then it's gonna be really easy for us to sell our prisoners and gain a pretty decent amount of cash without too much effort so that's nice and aha hello there oh uh, unfortunately this guy has already taught us which poem we can uh, we can learn so that's that's not great because I would have actually liked to have gained an additional choice because I'm pretty sure wait did we, did we already did we already speak to our lady and tell her about the deflecting skeptical darts or something whatever that uh, whatever that poem actually is I think I think we did or maybe not hmm well, we are nearby to Kelradan Castle, so it might make sense for us to make a brief stopover there. Yeah, she is at Kelradan Castle still, and I need to find King Auric, of course, and he's close to Pern, our marshal. Okay, so where is Pern? Well, we've taken that from the Ravenstone. Where is Pern? Oh, there it is, over there. Uh, oh, it's being looted at the moment. Okay, well, I'm going to put romance above duty at this point, and we're going to go over to Kelradan Castle and see if we have actually used all of our poems and wow if only we were at war against the Feards Vein I'd like to be able to attack that guy with 41 that would be a pretty awesome way to gain some prisoners and maybe even gain a little bit of extra cash in the process through a ransom alright so we've improved her relation with us from 10 to 11 just by coming over here and do you like poetry? Ah, see, now we haven't used it. Okay, I am going to assume that she's not going to like this. Storming the Fortress of Love? Ah, yes, the lady sits within doing nothing, while the man is the one who strives and achieves. I have enough of that in my daily life. Why listen to poems about it? Okay, so thankfully, she doesn't lose relation as a result of this. So it seems like that was a kind of negative neutral result which I think is pretty awesome I I was fully expecting her to lose like three relation or something which would have taken me three visits to get back up so that's that's nice that, that is absolutely fine with me I don't really mind about that and at least we did fulfill that and we gained an additional re uh, a different additional renown no additional relation point with her so that's nice otherwise I might actually try and see if I can catch up to our marshal Oh, never mind, the quest was cancelled. Okay. Oh, and now he's having a feast. Okay, well, that's interesting. Okay, so otherwise, ah, there's our marshal. So he is deciding now to lay siege to Callandane Castle. Where is Callandane Castle? Ooh, wait a minute. I remember that we are actually at war against the Empire now, as well as the Ravenstern. Ah, interesting. Okay, so technically, we could do battle against some Empire units and maybe even join our Marshal for the siege. But we're going to see if we'll do that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.